It's so good seeing all of you again at an election rally. Thank you. Thank you for this very warm reception. I am humbled. I am also thrilled to stand before you again tonight after a long break, a very long break, and to share with you the exciting message of the SDP, a message that for 15 years I've been working on, a message that I want you to help me spread throughout Singapore. And the message is this. Never before in Singapore's history has an opposition party built up an alternative platform, backed up by a set of comprehensive policies, and then fielded a slate of candidates with the right stuff to push for these policies in the next parliament. We do this because we are a responsible party, a competent and constructive party. We do this because we want to give you a reason to vote for the SDP, not just against the PAP. We do this because we want to build a system where we can have intelligent and substantive debates in Parliament where policies come under intense scrutiny by SDP MPs. Through the course of this campaign, my fellow candidates and I will highlight the alternative ideas that the SDP has drawn up and we will explain how they will ease the burden for you. But there isn't enough time for me to go through all of the details of our policies, and this is why I invite you to go to our website at yoursdp.org and read for yourselves how our ideas can help you. So what is it that we want to make better? The most pressing issue that you've told us is the high cost of living. And because of this, the stressful lifestyle that we all struggle with in Singapore. In 2014, a survey by the Credit Leone Securities Asia showed that almost half of households in Singapore have little or no savings. In other words, they live from paycheck to paycheck. Now, this is the middle class we're talking about. They're just one bill away from financial ruin. If your children contract a serious illness, or say if your mother, elderly mother, falls and breaks her hip and needs to go to hospital, or you get into an auto accident, you are staring into a financial abyss. Now, I don't know what you're going to do if this happens, but I know what I am going to do. I'm going to go into Parliament to make sure that we lower the cost of living. That same survey found that the majority of our elderly indicate that they are not saving any money. Is this any surprise? After we work all our lives to pay off our HDB loans, how much do we have left? And the little that we have left. The PAP now wants to withhold it under the minimum sum scheme. The survey also found that a high proportion of younger Singaporeans in their 30s and their 40s are unable to save. Now, you don't need to be a genius to figure out that it is the cost of living that is the cause of much of our difficulties. In 2001, according to the Economist Intelligence Unit, we were only the 97th most expensive city in the world. In just over 10 years, we jumped to becoming the most expensive city in the world. A PAP will tell you that all this is because of world trends, nothing they can do about. This is patently untrue. Our financial and economic stress is a direct result of PAP policies. And I'll show you how. In 2001, Mr. Li Xianlong, who was then the Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister, he rewrote the Banking Act to attract the super-rich to come to Singapore. As a result, 
we have the highest proportion of millionaires and billionaires in the world. The massive inflow of foreign capital pushed prices of everything, housing, cars, rent, your food, and so on, pushed all these prices up. At the same time, the PAP opened the floodgates and imported en masse cheap foreign labor. Now, now you're competing with foreign workers who can take the kind of salary that you cannot survive on. This double whammy of the escalation of the cost of living on the one end and the stagnation of wages on the other, both borne out of PAP policies, is making life extremely tough for our people. It's the same dismal outlook for our younger Singaporeans, including our graduates. For them, the future looks anything but hopeful. They now have to compete with foreign students for places in our universities. And these foreign students are, for some reason, that I still quite, can't quite figure out, get, uh, getting generous financial assistance from the government. And when our local students graduate, they have a tough time finding jobs. And when they finally end up with a job, many are underemployed engaging in low-paying or low-skilled positions. Again, because they are competing with foreigners in our own backyard. How many times have you heard of university graduates, some even with advanced degrees, having to resort to driving taxis? Not that there's anything wrong with driving taxis. It's an honest living, and I have tremendous respect for our taxi drivers when they go out for such long hours. But clearly, clearly our university graduates are not being employed in the fields that they've been trained for. And there is something wrong with our system. And with high HDB prices, housing has become largely unaffordable for young couples. Because of all this, our work-life balance is completely out of kilter. If you so much as to dare leave the office at five and say that you want to spend time with your family on weekends instead of coming back to the office. You're afraid that your boss will replace you with a foreign worker because there is an abundant supply of them in Singapore. All this is making Singapore a very unhappy place to live in. A Gallup poll found recently that Singaporeans were the least likely to report having positive emotions. Another survey conducted by the Randstad Group just last year found that Singaporeans are the least happy and the most stressed out workers in Asia. As a result, many Singaporeans choose to emigrate to other countries. Unfortunately, these are, according to the government, the top four or five percent of our talent pool, the very people whose skills we need in Singapore. So what does the PAP do? Instead, instead of reviewing its policies that are causing all of these problems, it comes up with this brilliant idea to replace us with foreigners. In the past decade or so, we have brought in so many foreign workers that for every 10 people that you see out in the street, only six are Singaporeans. Now, I want you to listen carefully because this is where it gets crazy really fast. The PAP sees all these Singaporeans leaving, and it hatches the idea to bring in foreigners to replace us. This makes this crowded island even more congested, which leads to greater competition for jobs, making the already stressful situation here even more intense, and in turn that leads to even more Singaporeans wanting to leave, and on goes the crazy downward spiral. We saw this. We saw this happening 20 years ago. We tried to warn Singaporeans about the damage that it was going to cause. I can show you all copies of our newspapers, The New Democrat, where we tried to warn Singaporeans of PAP's intentions and policies. We said that we needed an opposition in parliament 
an effective opposition that will think for you, that will look out for you, an opposition like the SDP. But election after election, the PAP candidates were voted in with overwhelming majority. And there was no one, no one to check its policies, no one to review its policies, resulting in the problems that we have today. Will it happen again, this election? No. Will Singaporeans, with all the problems that we are facing, problems which I repeat, are a direct result of PAP policies, vote in the PAP again in such numbers that we only end up with one party in the House? Imagine, imagine, my friends, the nightmare of waking up next Saturday morning after polling day and finding out that PAP has again won all of the seats. Then think, think of all the problems that you face. The overcrowding, the stress, the low wages, the unfair competition for jobs, the underemployment, the high cost of living, your medical bills, unaffordable HDB prices, your future without adequate retirement income. And then think that you have no one to speak up for you on these issues, that you don't have a voice in parliament. It's a bit like driving a car without a steering wheel, isn't it? But it doesn't have to be that way. You can have a say in shaping our future. You can have a say in our policies that will affect your future, your children's future. But you can only do this if you vote for the SDP. It is an unthinkable scenario, but not an impossible one. And the only way to prevent such a nightmare, my friends, is to make sure that you vote for the SDP and tell all your neighbours to do the same. Now I want you to picture this, the reverse. Think about the next parliament with 11 competent, constructive, committed SDP MPs. Now think about the issues we will raise. Think about how when the government says, let's raise the GST, or let's delay the CPF withdrawal age again, or let's raise the minister's pay, then think about how the SDP will be there to speak up for you. Now as sure as the sun will rise tomorrow, the PAP will say that our ideas are dangerous and reckless, and it will ruin the country and bankrupt the nation. Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan has already started the ball rolling. And two, if they cannot convince you, they will say that Chi Soon Juan is a liar. Chi Soon Juan is a untrustworthy. Chi Soon Juan is a gangster. I don't know what this has anything to do with the debate. But every time when they cannot answer our questions or debate with us in a logical manner, they will throw out their standard line. Chi Soon Juan is a liar, a gangster, a psychopath. Already, Sim An and Lawrence Wong are starting these personal attacks and bringing up issues about Mr. Cham Si Tong, about the healthcare subsidies hearing, issues that happened, and I'm not exaggerating, that took place in the last century. <laughs> Their idea is to attack me and to see if I respond and whether I defend myself. If I do, they will attack even more. And by the time we're done with the nine days of campaign, the whole elections would be over and they would have achieved their objective which is to prevent me and my colleagues from talking about the real issues. More importantly, to distract you, the voters, from the real problems that you face. My friends, you tell me, is this a trap? But I find it so sad. Our younger generation of ministers are also showing that they're willing to engage in this kind of gutter politics.
to win at all costs. I want to tell them that they're still young. They have a whole career ahead of them. I want to tell Mr. Lawrence Wong and Ms. Sim An that it's not worth it. For what profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? I want to stick to the issues. I understand your worries. I know your hardship. I see your pain. I know because I've listened to you. I know because I've spoken with you. I know because I live among you. I know what it feels like to keep counting your dollars and trying to cut down on expenses. When you need to see a doctor or buy that extra packet of milk or choose a better quality cooking oil, you are always checking your purse to see if you can afford it. I understand. Sometimes I go to Giant to buy groceries. And once in a while, I want to buy some ice cream for my children. So I go to the freezer and I look, take a look at the prices and immediately I discount Ben and Jerry's haagen -Dazs. I look at Wall's ice cream and I think of getting a tub. And my wife comes along and says, maybe it's better we get it if it's on sale. I know. I know what it is like to count your every dollar. At times like these, the worst thing to have are people who are out of touch with reality and make policies that affect you and how you live. If they don't understand, if they don't understand the difficulties that you face, difficulties that you face, then how can they help you? Mr. Chan Chun Singh, DPM Thaman, say that Singaporeans earning 1,000 can not only survive, but buy an HDB flat as well. <laughs> Mr. Tan Chuan Jin thinks that some of our elderly people collecting cardboard do it because they want to exercise. And when PAP MP, Dr. Lily Neal, pointed out that meals at hawker centres were too expensive for the poor, Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan haughtily replied, how much do you want? Do you want three meals in a hawker centre, food court or restaurant? This is a party that has so many millionaire ministers that they don't know what it is like to be poor. They are completely out of touch with the real Singapore. Folks, there is nothing more dangerous than a government that is out of touch with reality. We understand. We care. We know that you want a compassionate government. You want someone who thinks about you when policies are made. You want somebody who cares about your difficulties. My friends, I care. Professor Paul Tambaya cares. John Tan cares. Chong Wai Fung cares. The SDP cares. That's why we are here. That's why we're doing this. And that's why 25 years ago, I joined the SDP. I could have continued to be a professor, earning by now $20,000, maybe even more, with all my consultant's fees. My wife, May, she also holds a PhD, and will also be working. Together, we could have led a more than comfortable life. But I don't care. I don't care about the zeros at the end of my paycheck. No, I take that back. <laughs> to be honest, to be very honest, I do care. But not enough to keep silent when I see that old lady who is bent at the waist collecting cardboard just to make her pay for her meals. While that permanent secretary 
flies his family all the way to Paris and pays $50,000 just for cooking classes. When every time my children stand up in school and say, to build a democratic society based on justice and equality, I am part of that system that lies to them. These, these are the things that I care about. And these are the matters that I want to take with me to Parliament, to speak up and to change things for the better, for you, for all of us. I want a system that works just not for the rich, but for everyone in this country. I want a people healthy and happy, not an island overcrowded and stressful. I want affordable housing where flats don't cost us a lifetime to pay off. I want our retirees to live secure and dignified lives with all our CPF savings. I want a universal health care system where everyone gets quality medical attention regardless of their financial status. I want a political leaders who serve the people, not just themselves. Will you, my friends, will you go out and tell everyone in the constituencies what you've heard here tonight? Tell them. Tell them that you have heard this vision of a prosperous and productive Singapore. A Singapore that cares for our weak and our old. A Singapore that is open and democratic. Tell them that the SDP is more than just a party. It is an idea, a way of life, a vision that will transform Singapore for the better. Tell them that you have heard of this party that wants to serve you, not lord over you. A party that truly cares. Tell them, my friends, tell them that there is an alternative. Tell them about the SDP. If this is the kind of voice you want in Parliament, a competent, constructive, and compassionate voice, if this is what you believe in for our future, our families, and our nation, then tell them that they must vote for the SDP. You must vote for the SDP. I have never lost faith in Singaporeans. And even in the bleakest of moments, I've always believed that we would triumph, that democracy would eventually come, and that justice would ultimately prevail. How am I so confident? Because the human spirit can only be suppressed, never crushed. Thank you, and good night.